the wheel as you will expect he'll be doing a similar kind of scenario and maneuvers and to me in the mini so kicking it off roundabouts and seeing how it grips and so on correct that's right although we, we might be driving a bit more sedately because uh, at Lloyd Vehicle Consulting we uh, we tend to drive more sedately after all I do have a tweed jacket which I will wear for all my reviews indeed you do so yeah Woo, focus <clears throat> yes indeed so we'll go down again to B&W and, and Mini's UK headquarters. Ah, and another 10 roundabouts. Yeah, a lot more roundabouts, just so we can see how the car sort of handles, basically. Yeah. We've got sort of bits of acceleration, which, like that. Oh, look, a golf pulls out in front of you. That's Mini nice. for me, golf for you. I'm in a bright I'm in a bright yellow car, so, I mean, you know, people can't really miss me. Well, it's a very nondescript car. It's not the kind of thing that you'll easily see at a roundabout, is it? Uh, no. <laughs> not really. Oh, there's that Mustang again. Yes, yeah, you do like it, don't you? I, it does look pretty cool, doesn't it, in black? Yeah. So, what can we tell you about the MG3? Well, you've managed to achieve something like, what was it, 43 to the gallon? I have, I've done about, I've done over 500 miles in this car since I got it uh, last Tuesday. That is an impressive total. And I've, uh, well, I think you've probably beat me slightly, because we, we got the car as just one day apart, didn't we? Yes. Um, and uh, yes, I've been doing about 43 miles per gallon uh, over all sorts of mixed driving. Um, I've done motorways, I've done country roads. Yesterday I drove all the way to a car show in Dorset, it was well over an hour and a half. So Most you had tyres, um, tyre smoke bellowing, yeah? Um, I, Not quite. I did, I did drive uh, um, briskly. Oh, good, good, the good. Car, the car will go briskly, but oh, I don't. Well. I don't do things like seen the speed limits and I mean, of course you know, it's not my car so I wouldn't do you know tire burst acceleration it. Yeah I agree you could definitely get sideways off here if need be. Oh I heard a high rev then. I need yes. to get in there because otherwise the focus wouldn't let me through. But so I'm as you great. can see it's all a facade. Joseph is actually a rally driver, he just won't admit it. I will get to see this exterior of him someday we'll yes. put him in a mclaren and he'll just go around in circles and disappear possibly when we go and visit um santa night, night, night technologies limited Ooh. staffordshire yes who have four modified mg3s <laughs> oh um, can't and, wait uh, there's, a, there's a supercharged one which is a road going version and then also they have um a track car that they're building in a moment with 400 horsepower I can't believe that's 170, the road one, you know. Yeah. It would be easier to sort of just put in um, the 165 horsepower engine from BMG GS, yeah. which is a turbocharged version of the engine in this car. To how many vehicles it would actually surprise in a motorway yeah. or a dual carriageway. Yeah, I mean, that, um, that engine doesn't fit, though, so you have to sort of improvise. But it's a, it's a 1.5 litre four cylinder naturally aspirated engine with variable valve timing yeah uh, developing 105 horsepower and all mg3s in this country have the same engine the same gearbox it's a five speed manual unit and it, it particularly in a post facelift car like this one it feels very nice indeed and this will rev out to 7000 if you do so need to yes yeah, so, well, well and uh, i i'm I speaking from um, i don't tend to need to do that sir but, i uh, do what well do you, i live on country do? roads the, the problem i've got around me is if you want to enter a public, you know, say a country road, and there's people coming towards you, the gaps are pretty tight. They, yeah, they are indeed. Because it's honeypot area, it goes from three lanes to two lanes to one lane. So the fact that you can rev the... Give it a chance. We're back, apologies. Yes, as I, as I was saying, uh, so we're driving um, the 2019 MG3 1.5 exclusive that I've been reviewing this week on my channel. Um, near the BMW Mini headquarters in Farnborough, in Hampshire. Um, you took this down to see a certain launch last week as well, didn't you? I did. I, I, I didn't drive it all the way in central London. But yeah, well, that's probably a good move. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it would have it would taken me like four days to get there if I'd done that. Um, but I did drive some of the way to the MG ZS EV launch, um, which I know has been a very popular video on the Planet Auto YouTube channel. It certainly has. You and Annabelle have... Um... Yes, you've really done a great job on that car, and Michael and I were a bit gutted we couldn't see it. But we had to drive BM, couldn't see it. But we had to drive BMWs if you want to see those. They're yeah. on the channel too. And he wasn't got to drive your 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 Mini, um, oh. the, the Mini Cooper S. Oh. Um, 
60th anniversary edition, which is the car that you're reviewing this week and also the car that we were just in. Well, that's it. When you look at these two together, they're completely different markets, but they both have fun aspects. They, they both do. have strengths. They do, and of course, um, until the year 2000, MG and um, Mini were the same company. Exactly. And um, they had been for, well, since 59, actually, um, because BMC, which, which um, MG was part of, was founded in 52, and a 59 original Mini came out, and the car was released to the press in August 59. So it's rather apt to have a 60-year anniversary model just released now. Yes. And the way that it's British Racing Green has limited edition wheels, the two-litre Cooper engine, and that kind of thing. Uh, yes, indeed, and uh, we're watching lots and lots of very nice BMWs and a Twar is that a Twarik living? It is. Coming out of the BMW headquarters, um, which is in Farnborough. I should just sit here and go, have that, have that, yeah, have that, Yeah, we've got lots and, that. and lots and lots of... Oh my word, is that an X4? What is that? Or is that an X2? I think that's two. an X2. So two, yeah. Um, so we'll get, see if I can get out in front of this car as, here. Yes, there we go. As you can see, um, the Mini being driven like a Mini oh, that, should be. Now that does feel good. Look at that. that. There we go. Now that's some cornering for you. The hydraulic steering in an MG3 is astonishingly good. It's worth saying that my wife and I actually own a 2014 MG3 1.5 style. Um, I bet your wife's had Chevelle's. Um, I don't know. But <laughs> not, not quite, but... Um, mm. I bet she you'll, has. You'll get, you'll get to see the car tomorrow, but she's coming, she's coming along in it. So, yes, uh, I'm um, looking forward to it. And then tomorrow, of course, we've got our next battle, which is uh, my San Toledo versus the Skoda Scarlet. I know. Which, um, which is going to be interesting. Um, but uh, yes, yeah, this, this, this car, in comparison to the Mini, it does feel kind of very sort of basic in the sense of the fact it's not the most refined car in the world, but it doesn't really need to be. Exactly. Um, this is a much more refined car than the pre-facelift one, by the way, this post-facelift car. Um, the steering is lovely. The gearbox, now they've put a new gear lever on this, is exceptionally nice to use. Um, as long as you kind of keep this car in a power band, it does go okay. Although, it, I, I prefer cars with... Back. Yeah. Yes, uh, Joseph then experienced the power of the 1.5 VVTi. We got See? over three and a half thousand revs, I think. I don't think we quite achieved the dizzy high of three and a half thousand. No, we did quite well. We did, and you know, I'm compensating now by driving um, much more economically now. Yeah, um, as you can see, we're doing 78. Yeah. The, uh, <laughs> No, we're not. We're, we're, we're doing under, under the I like the way limit. you agreed and then thought, wait yeah, a we're, minute. We're, we're doing under the speed limit. Tom Fillery. Yeah. The, um, the ride in this car, though, I think in comparison to the Mini, but both the cars are firm rides. They are very firm rides. They are firm but the rides. Mini does seem to be a little more bouncier, doesn't it? Whereas this is a bit more thuddy. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, the, the, most people who drive MG3s will tell you that they do ride very firmly. And oh, yeah. Having had one for. Um, two, two and a half years, I can tell you, but we are a bit on the firm side. But... You're talking to someone who owns a Golf Mark II 16 valve yeah. with a set of Coney dampers that's, and HR springs. In comparison, that's nothing, is it? I was going to say, it's nothing compared to that certain Rover you drove that was uh, basically like it was oh, on but, concrete. Oh, but it fell the MOT. Oh! Um, because one of the springs was broken. Ah, yes. And I asked Mr. Matt Richardson from Furious Driving, who very kindly allowed me to review the 1993 Rover 220 Tomcat on his on my channel, um, if I'd broken the springs on his car. Probably. And no, he said no. <laughs> so, I, mean, I mean, that's fine. Well, we know damn well that you did not do that because yes. you, you treat cars with um, uh, kid gloves, shall we say. Well, I, I try to. Um, Whereas I do the complete and utter opposite. So when, we, when we met up last, um, last week to do the full review on this car, which will be coming on my channel at some point. Obviously, you can watch Planet Auto t um, MG3 reviews. I do have a review of a 2014 MG3, which is our car, um, on my channel as well. But there are two MG3 reviews on um, the Planet Auto, one, one to 2016. Montego! <laughs> Oh, that had factory plates on it as well. A Montego! Did you see it had factory plates Yeah, on it. I like the way it was towing a trailer and looked like yeah. it was pulling up and heading to the moon. That was a post facelift car, so it'd be about yeah. 1990. Well, that's why I had to look twice. Yeah, yeah, very knackered old Montego. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, factory plates on that. Okay, would be a Birmingham plate, so that might have been a, um, a Rover Group supplied car originally. Yeah. Uh, obviously, the MG3 was also built at that factory until 2016, but the 
Um, pre Isn't it weird that we're seeing cars that are actually, you know, yeah. we see BMW and then we see a Montego that is directly, in a word, related yeah. to the MG3. I, it, well, well, until 2016, MG3s, like, like the one that we've got, yeah. they were partially assembled in Longbridge yes. in Birmingham. Um, this Ooh, one, look, start, stop. Yeah, because, because this is a post based car, it does have start, stop. Um, ours doesn't. Um, it's a fairly decent system as well, actually. Mm. Um, and it, this car's got a reversing camera, it's got air conditioning, it's got Apple CarPlay, um, it's got these sort of leatherette um, seats. It's very comfortable actually. I find this car more comfortable than the pre facelift car. This is a lot more refined. The seats seem buckettier and yeah. there's more comfort to them, certainly. Yeah, they are. They are. I, mean, doing... I prefer the ergonomics of this um, dashboard as well. Yes, certainly. It's a lot easier to find things if you're not familiar with MGs. Yeah. The, yeah. the pre facelift car is okay. Um, you've got to bear in mind that the, the, even the the second top model on a, a pre faced MG3 was £10,000. Yeah. This one is 12800 without this um, paint colour. Uh, if you just want white, but it's 12800 you've obviously got to pay extra for you know, nice paint. Just wait for that Scirocco to go, go around as well. That's Rocket. a very late Scirocco indeed. Hmm. Right, so yes, we'll come out and do modest driving. Which yes, is what indeed. I tend to do most of the time. So as you can see, handles well enough. Under yep. load, it will really handle as well. You can get them sideways. Uh, I have. Um, probably, very, probably, very cool. Probably the, the yellow pre facelift car you definitely. The yellow one cars. I drove to Goodwood, and uh, you drove. That I did a thousand miles, yeah. including commute through the middle of London. Yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? <laughs> yes, um, I loved it. So ben, ben and I, we we. We've certainly got a lot of experience of driving MG's current range. Yeah, we have. Um, the only thing I, that I'm missing personally, I've driven um, a, a petrol ZS, an electric ZS. Yes. I've driven pre and post place of MG's. You've actually Street. driven more and more advanced stuff than me now. Yeah, I've driven also... Ironically for my channel. channel. <laughs> I've, I've actually driven also a, a, a petrol and diesel MG6. Yeah. Um, which, you I know, haven't driven any of them. Which before Planet Auto existed in its current form, um, those those cars were available, but of course MG wouldn't have had those um, by the time that you no. got your hands on their press fleet. I'd like to see you in the Mini, you know. I'm sure, you know, well, with well, all its mod cons and its handling and the fact that you can probably get, a, you know, a decent economy out of it. I just yeah, you just haven't really tried for it. it. No. Like that way. I would personally, for me, I'd go for the standard Cooper engine, um, 1.5. Would you go for the petrol or the diesel? I wouldn't buy the diesel. Ah, interesting. You, you, you know, sir, on my channel, we, we cannot talk about diesels. We do not talk about diesels, sir. That is, that is, uh, that is a, fight club. That is, a, that is a dirty word, sir. Uh, um, we don't talk about diesels on my channel, sir. I do like the petrol Cooper, though. Yeah, the petrol Cooper, it's the same engine as in the BW i8. The 1.5 three-cylinder engine. That's not a three-cylinder, though. Is it not? No. This is a four-cylinder. The, you, the one you've got here yeah. is, is a Cooper S, so it's yeah. an engine. It's exactly. Two, two yeah, whereas the other ones are. So, That's what staggers me. Just think if you'd have put that engine in an i8. Yeah, but. Be like a bullet. Then you wouldn't have got. You, know, you, you wouldn't get that lovely tone engine. from the three cylinder either. Yeah. And you've got an electric motor to combine it, which means you get lightning uh, responses, as we all know. You, you do indeed. This, this car oh, look, an old mini! I didn't see it. There, if you look in your mirror now, you'll oh, right. see it. Yeah, I can see it. I was trying to drive and not get on. I know, I understand. But that's the first classic Mini I've seen. Yeah, it's, it's weird considering we are, we literally passed just now the, oh, you're, are you going to let me in? Yes. It is now. Thank you. It's a surprising being a bright yellow car. How yeah. people? Yeah, it was invisible, they, isn't it? They claim not to see you. Yes. Which obviously, I don't <laughs> think is quite. That's some nice. helicopters and planes, there just so you know. <laughs> it's, it's, it's funny, we, we, we went to BMW hmm. and, and Mini's headquarters, but yeah. they didn't seem to have any classic Minis there, did they? No. There's just, just lots and lots of new BMWs and Minis coming out of yeah. the exit. So, yes, here we are back at the uh, Aviator Hotel. Here There's the, the Mini. There it is, yeah, and we were marking off soon. But, we'll just uh, get out, have a quick walk around both, yeah, and then. Um, do that. Um, but this, is, this has been the Battle of the Brits, the 2019 MG3 1.5 exclusive versus the 2019 Mini Cooper S 60th Anniversary Edition. Um, this price of that is about £30,000, so you can actually buy two of these and, and buy yourself a little, you know, 
I suppose, a sort of banger to go to Santa Pod in um, with the money that you you wouldn't have a Mini Cooper and the refinement in that car is absolutely immense. You've got things like reversing camera, yeah. you can also get a heads up display, you can get active cruise control with collision yeah. mitigation, you can get lots of different things and I really do think it's worth the money. Yes you do, but they just I think appeal to different people don't exactly. they? Um, I mean, it does look lovely there, doesn't it? It does. Talking reversing cameras, we'll try out the one in this car as well. Okay. Um, which, you know, I'm sure will be um, very good because I used it today and it's actually, for a car costing this amount of money, it is, it is actually very, very good. It's probably one of the ZS, to be honest. Um, so there you are. It's looking very nice and I don't normally need a reversing camera, but I don't. There, it, there it is. And, and you even have a buzzer. Helpful. So there we go. We'll take a we'll take a little look around both the, both the cars before we we finish this. We will. Final part of our little um, review series. <clears throat> we can certainly say they're both in very very bright colours. Uh, yes, they are indeed. Mine is a slightly more subtle colour, and yours just um, well shines. It was helpful when I was at a classic car show in Dorset yesterday. You could find it. Trying to find it in the car park. <laughs> it was uh, very easy to find like that. Yeah. But so there we go. The Cooper S and the MG3. Both very different. And also, in some ways, sort of similar feel in terms of the handling. Um, both with... Uh, and both by the same company at one point. Yeah, until 2000, they were... MG and Mini were under the same company. Um, from 59 onwards. So there you go. We will leave you with a shot of the Mini and the MG3. Thank you. Lots more hijinks with the Skoda Scala and Toledo tomorrow.